Hello and welcome to Experience Data Talk, a weekly show talking with some of the smartest people working in data science today. I'm very, very excited because we're talking to Bo Walker. He is a data scientist with a JD in intellectual property law. He has a master's degree in ecology and evolutionary biology, biology, and he also did undergraduate work in biology over at Brigham Young University. Bo, thank you so much for being our guest today. Great to be here. Thank you. So, Bo, you first caught my attention because of your outstanding work just helping other data scientists. I mean, you're a mentor. You work with a lot of different organizations. You do data science boot camps at UCI. Um, and then I started seeing that you were doing like live Q&A sessions on Instagram Live. And I go, I got to meet this guy. You, <laughs> you're just doing tremendous work just for the data science community. I love it. Um, thank you. I, one thing that's really neat about the data science community is it's very opening, open. Um, a lot of very helpful people, um, and there's a there's a great group of, of people on LinkedIn, especially that that are that are helpful and um, you know very you know very receptive to, to helping people get started into it. And you know a lot of a lot of us that are data scientists have have a background that isn't specifically data science, um, and so I, I especially love to help help people transition into the field. Um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting because your background in the sciences and then you move over to law and get your Juris Doctorate, right, in intellectual mm -hmm. property law. And you would think your next step would then to become, you know, full-time lawyer <laughs> and you took a different route. Can you kind of tell us about your journey? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, whenever a recruiter has looked at my profile, they, they get confused about, <laughs> you know, what, kind of what, what does this path mean? Um, but you, you know, to, to kind of give some context, um, you know, kind of two minute overview, uh, I, I grew up in a household. My dad's a marketing guy and an entrepreneur. Um, you know, some family businesses are the family restaurant. Ours was marketing. Um, mm. I worked in a bunch of different startups or helped him, you know, I've done all aspects of, of, of marketing. So kind of, you know, and he, he had a couple patents, um, and just kind of grew around in that environment. Um, and when I got to school, you know, my, my interests were in science, um, originally started pre-med, um, you know, studied biology and then got involved in some great research labs doing scientific research and, and analysis. Um, and, and that's kind of where I picked up my core data science skills. Um, you know, my master's thesis was developing computer vision methods for mm -hmm. measuring erosion in the desert, um, in, in Utah. Um, and so, you know, I had to learn, um, you know, Python, MATLAB, and R, um, advanced statistics and machine learning methods um, just to kind of solve this problem. Um, but at the same time as I was contemplating, do I continue in academia? I, you know, having grown up with an entrepreneur, I just had this love of business um, and, and that, you know, I, in academia, the impact of your work sometimes is years before um, you know, you have any real impact of your research, um, depending on what you're doing, but in business, the results can be, um, you can have, you know, instantaneous or, or, or a lot more um, impact. Um, so I, I took a job as a data scientist for a marketing consulting firm. Um, and this was back kind of when the term data scientist was, was relatively new, um, kind of back in 2011, 2010. Um, and I was using all of the, the analytical and programming skills that I used in my master's um, in a business context. And that was really exciting. Um, but at the same time, you know, not really sure about what data science was as a profession. I was kind of planning, oh, I love business. I love science. You know, patent law seems like a, a great combination of that. You know, I've always been interested in inventions and creating new things. So I went to law school um, and it, it took me about a month in law school to, to realize how much I missed data and programming. And so I immediately started taking freelance data wow. clients. Um, and, you know, but at the same time, I was you know, committed to law school. I got a job at a law firm drafting patents, um, you know, in the biotech and, and kind of data science and, and um, other industries. Um, a couple of things happened to me while I was working there for a couple of years. One is when inventors would come in with an, with an exciting, um, new new thing I was jealous that I was just writing about it and not helping them build it or coming up with it myself um, and um, <laughs> and then the other thing is you know you know I'd be sitting um, in uh, contracts class um, 
and instead of taking notes, I'd be programming. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and uh, that's not. Um, and I did. I did well, well enough in law school. You know, I didn't fail law school or anything. Right. But I just started to realize, like, this is where my interest and my mm -hmm. love is. Um, you know, I the things that I read for fun are not legal blogs. Um, it, it's all the data science blogs. I love hearing about new machine learning methods and, um, you know, the stuff I would do in my free time would be data science projects. Um, and so I, I made, when I had the opportunity, I made the jump back to data science full time and, and, you know, haven't looked back and, and I've, and I've loved it. So that, that's kind of a, you know, my, my story. So that's awesome. Well, it's not only that you love data science and passionate about it, but you're also helping others and mentoring others through the different organizations that you work with through the boot camps that you hold over at UCI. And I'm kind of curious, like, what drives you to be a mentor to help upcoming data scientists? So one um, one is just my own kind of weird background getting into it that I, I see other people who maybe, you know, don't have a, a master's or a PhD in statistics or math, but they're really interested in, in data and interested in the field. Uh, and I happen to believe that diverse backgrounds are, are a huge benefit um, to, to data science. Um, that, that so much of data science revolves around um, the application of your analysis and, and math in, in a business context or in the, in the context of the field. Um, and, and there's so much benefit um, from having kind of a diverse background. So part of that is just me wanting to help people who are like me <laughs> or kind of come from a different background. Um, the other is I've always loved teaching. Um, I, you know, I, I really enjoy that. Um, I think that's initially why I considered academia. Um, but but it's it's really rewarding. You know, I learn a ton from from, from helping other people, um, and I, I feel like I, I in, in turn have been helped by a lot of mentors and other people in my career. And and you know I I'm I, I love to kind of pay it forward. Well, I love that about you, Bo, and it's so cool that you are doing that. You're living that out, paying it forward, and um, it's just beautiful to see. Um, so one of the biggest questions we have in our data science community on Facebook is how do I get started? How do I become a data scientist? And, you know, this is one of the things that you deal with on Instagram live. You're mm -hmm. answering questions. And I'm kind of curious, like what sorts of roadmaps do you provide people on how to begin that process? So, um, you know, I think the very, the, the very first, first thing that you need is uh, curiosity and, and a drive um, to, you know, to, to, the best data scientists that I know are ones that are driven by curiosity. They love to solve problems. Um, uh, they're curious about the world and, and, and you know, they may want to build things for, for people. And so that that's kind of the first prerequisite. Um, and I think most people thinking to get into data science have that or else they wouldn't, wouldn't be thinking about it. You know, you shouldn't um, jump into it because you, you think that there's great salaries, which a lot of times there are. Um, you should you should jump into it because you're passionate because it can take a lot of work. Um, and then you know the next thing that that you need um, is an understanding of programming and, and statistics. Um, you know those are kind of two um, you know very important parts of what a data scientist does of really unlocking the the value of, of an organization's data um, in a way where they're at, they're producing insights or, or they're producing some kind of predictive model. Or, or, or something that, um, you know, artificial intelligence or something that the business can use to actually um, function better. Um, there's a lot of ways to, to get that knowledge. Um, that there's, you know, so many options from, from boot camps like I teach to, to, to online courses, to, to free courses, you know, that there's even now, uh, very recently, um, a lot of universities are offering data science tracks, um, either as part of the undergrad or, or master's degree in, in, in data science. Um, and, and people always ask me, you know, what <laughs> what course should I take? Or they'll send me a link to, to whatever online course and say, is this a good one? Should I take it? Um, and, and what I say is, you know, what what really makes a course good is that you can take something from it and, and actually apply it to something. Um, and and the, the west, best way that, that I recommend figuring out what skills um, to learn is to figure out what you're interested in um, or the domain you're interested in. So say you're interested in, in self-driving cars, you know, you, you, you really want to help build that. 
go figure out what you need to know to, to be to be doing that. Uh, and then base, you know, your courses in, in, uh, off of that. Um, if you kind of have a, a problem solving approach to learning instead of, um, you know, saying what, <laughs> instead of the other way around, uh, it, it makes it a lot easier. And, and, and part of that helps with his data science um, in, in any organization can be, can be drastically different. Um, what a data scientist does you know, in the financial industry may be way different than, than you know, what, what I've done in, in biotech and healthcare. Um, and I mean, the underlying principles may be the same, but in terms of the tools that we use and, and even the methods, um, those can change. Um, and, and so it really helps to, to kind of have an idea of, of where your interests are and, and what your passion passion is. Bo, what type of time investment would you say someone needs to have to, to really, you know, develop their skills to become a data scientist. Cause I've looked at different online programs and I've seen like the, the nine month course here and there. Mm -hmm. um, of course you can go the academic route and, you know, maybe pursue degrees in statistics and, and take all the math classes that you need. Um, but what type of time investment would you say that someone who's really passionate, who really wants to uh, pursue, let's say machine learning, what, what would they need to, you know, plan out as far as their schedule? Well, I, I think um, it depends on the route that you, you, you feel would work best for you to learn the material that you need. Um, so much, uh, I, yes, that is a really good question. I agree with Christina. Um, but there's so much information online just freely available um, that that can help. But, but it's also, if you don't come from, from the background, it can be really hard to, to pick that up on your own. Um, you know, boot camps can be great of kind of giving you a general overview of things. And those usually range between three months to, to nine months, like you said. Um, that can be a significant time, time um, commitment. Um, you know, but, but there's also some things if, if you're already a programmer um, and, and just those things come really naturally to you, you, I mean, you could probably come up to speed on some things a lot, a lot quicker. Um, and, um, yeah, so, so it really depends. I, I think it's not something, given the, um, the complexity uh, of learning programming languages, it's just like learning uh, any other language. Um, it, it takes time. Um, it takes a lot of practice, um, a, a, lot of, a lot of coding. Um, and, you know, so it's going to be a time investment. It, it really how much, um, you know, really depends. I, I would say, I, you know, for me, it's, it's taken seven years um, and, and counting. <laughs> to <laughs> so um, I think that's one thing that I, I love about the profession, but is that it that is constant is I'm always learning, I always have to learn, and I you know I still consider myself an aspiring data scientist. You know, the, one of my friends, Eric Weber, who's a data scientist at LinkedIn, he he had a post about this, this that said kind of all data scientists are aspiring data scientists. Mm -hmm. Just this idea that you know the field, the way that it's moving and moving so quickly, we all have to be always learning. So, uh, so not yeah, a specific that, answer to your question, but <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, and I think that's for anybody who's in a, a serious profession. Like we're always going to be students of that yep. profession, whether yep. it's marketing, whatever. Um, so there's lots of different roles within data science. There's like data analysts, people who do data mining. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about like broadly when someone says they're a data scientist or they work in data, what types of roles are there and maybe what types of skill sets would be appropriate for that type of role? Okay. So, um, and, and this will vary by organization, by industry, um, data science and, and the whole field that new enough terminology that it, it's kind of hard <laughs> to, to pin down exactly what, what people do. You know, that may, you may be put in a data analyst role that has the title of data science and, and not be doing data science, but, but, you know, people disagree about what exactly that means. But, but the way that I would answer this is to kind of walk you through of, of what a typical data pipeline looks like. Mm. Um, you know, at a very high level, you, know, you start with data. Uh, you might have to go out and get that data from somewhere. You know, have to do data collection. Um, the data needs to be prepared in a way that you can analyze it. Um, you need to perform an analysis on it. Um, kind of simple analysis and just kind of generally what's going on. It may be using advanced statistics um, and it, it may be 
um, trying to do, uh, you know, predict something in the future, which would, you know, which would be more advanced like machine learning. Um, and then from that point, um, typically uh, you either prepare a report or visualization or something based on, on what you discovered with the data with, with the intent that an organization can act on it, or you, um, you put your model into production um, and, and work with engineers to, to actually build it as part of some sort of product. Um, so for example, if you're in the credit risk industry, uh, data scientists would, would build a predictive model to say, should we loan money to this person or not? Um, and once they build that model, they build it into their system so that that decision is made automatically. Um, you know, and so that's kind of the general process of, of taking data or whatever form it is, turning it into something where you can actually get insights from it and, and doing something with it. Um, and so, uh, you know, data, data wrangling, data preparation, um, that tends to be more on, uh, you know, data engineers kind of focus on that area that, you know, data storage and, and, and getting data, data ready for analysis. That tends to be what data engineers focus on. Um, a lot of data scientists, myself included, depending on the project, I have to spend a lot of time in, in that, that area. Um, you know, and in my experience, data analysts, you know, kind of go through that, but they're more focused on um, kind of basic, basic insights um, and, and not necessarily into the, the deeper kind of machine learning methods. Um, and then data science, you know, uh, as a rule is, is considered, uh, you, you know, kind of focus more on prediction. Um, and focus more on the future than, than just retrospective. Um, again, these definitions are all very fuzzy. <laughs> There's a lot of debate on what it what it actually means, um, you know, and um, it can vary by organization, but hopefully that kind of gives a kind of basic overview of, of what a typical data pipeline is like um, at most, most organizations. Yeah, I like the way that you flesh that out um, because yeah, the term data scientist can be so broad Mm -hmm. There's so many hats at play and certainly in, in your roles, like you're playing oftentimes you're shifting back and forth between being an analyst, yep. doing data preparation, and then you're also doing predictions. So you're like, you're doing all of it, but certainly there are specific roles that are doing just one or two things. Yep. Yep. Are there, um, if you were hiring a data scientist, what are some things that you look for? Um, as far as like personality traits or strengths that you would want them to have? Uh, this is a great question. Um, and there's a, um, you know, a couple months ago, I just hired a, a, a data engineer, who I think qualify, you know, has some of these characteristics. So uh, the biggest thing is, is that curiosity. Um, you know, I, I think technical skills are important. Um, but what I'm looking for more, instead of saying, you know, I have this certification in Python, I want to see that they've done something with it. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> portfolio is huge. Um, but even more important than that, knowing that they, if for some reason, you know, I need them to learn a new programming language or new method, that, that, that they can do that. They can, they can go out and figure out and learn what needs to be learned and done to, to solve a problem. Um, for me, that's kind of the most important skill set. Um, you know, data science always throws you cur curveballs, uh, you know, and so the, the ability to, to recognize, you know, this is a problem that needs to be solved and to have the ability to go out and say, this is what I need to learn to, to figure out the best way um, to solve this problem, you know, um, and, and the way that things are evolving, the best way today may be different than the best way in a year from now, <laughs> you know, um, and, and so that, I mean, that's kind of, the most general characteristics of what I'm looking for is someone that just has that, that ability um, to, to go out and learn what they need to, to, to solve the problem. So, uh, and kind of built into that is, you know, programming skills and, and, and familiarity with, with dealing with data and, and other things like that. But yeah. And that, that goes back to what you were saying earlier about being a student, like mm -hmm. that's going to be important because Things are always changing, methods are always changing, and you have to be willing to adapt and maybe learn new languages, learn yep. new ways of doing something. Yep. Well, and I, um, I was talking with one of my friends, um, Ben Taylor, who's kind of a deep learning expert in the field. Um, I was talking with him a couple months ago, and he we were talking about this issue, and he said that he's learned that he's way better at Googling than most people. <laughs> you know, and, and I think, you know, that is absolutely uh, an important characteristic for a great data scientist. You know, 
I am really good at, at Googling. <laughs> I'm really good at searching Stack Overflow, you know, and, and figuring out, you know, if someone has solved my problem, maybe in a different domain um, before and, and getting an, an answer that I need, you know. Um, you know, I love that answer for him, but it, but it's absolutely true. Um, if, if, if you don't know how to frame a question and how to find an answer, then you'll have a hard time in data science because there's, there's so many unanswered things. Um, um, but, but that's also part of what makes it exciting. Yeah, I love that. Become a good Googler. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so Bo, um, for somebody like me who's not in the data science field, um, I've never t I've taken one computer science class in college, and I mm -hmm. barely passed. My professor was gracious with me. Uh, but that one class taught me that I have now the most utmost respect for any data scientist. I just took like, a visual basic C++ class back in the day. Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh man, people that work with data, hats off to them. <laughs> uh, well, C++ is a hard language, so that could be part of it. <laughs> <laughs> and we had to like hand write out the code in the final yeah. exam. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, I can't even test this. Uh, but anyways, um, what, do you, what advice do you have for those like myself who aren't in data science roles, but with this new age of AI, uh, more and more companies are leveraging data, um, certainly I'm thinking in the future, we're going to be working with some sort of maybe uh, voice assistant or mm -hmm. chat bot to be helping us. What, what types of things do you think that we should be doing now to prepare ourselves, even though I'm, we're not, I'm not a data scientist, but things just to kind of maybe learn to kind of prepare myself for, um, to do well in the future. So as a, as a consumer of these AI products or, or as someone who wants to be a part of building them, uh, actually, as somebody who's consuming, who's actually using them for okay. work, yeah. I, I think that, um, uh, you know, I, I think one important thing is the ability to cut through the hype <laughs> um, that, that surrounds these AI thing. Uh, you know, computers are actually pretty dumb. Um, this is kind of an old programming thing. They, they only do exactly what you tell them. Um, and so, and then... It, you know, and then to an extent of most AI, especially right now, um, is limited to to the data that you feed it. Um, and, and so I think kind of an understanding of, of what limitations of our a, of AI, you know, the, the reason that um, uh, self-driving car companies, um, you know, they, they, they have really complex simulations to simulate driving uh, and they have closed court. I think Waymo has like its own like closed course or driving course. Um, and they're basically trying to generate a whole bunch of data um, to, to feed their algorithms because the accuracy and, and, the, and the performance of their algorithms is entirely based on, on the amount of data um, that, that they have, um, you know, and, and a successful AI is one that, can do well when when it sees something that it hasn't seen before, um, and, and there's still a lot of limitations with that. So, I, so I think the first thing would be is, you know, kind of take the hype that you hear in the media kind of with a grain of salt, um, and realize that there are limitations. And, and most AI is going to be really good at potentially at one or two things um, specifically, um, um, but but we're still a little bit of ways away from kind of general general AI, um, and. Um, so, so I think that's the biggest thing. Um, I, I think, but on the flip side, I think that there's a lot of things that, that we can, um, you know, that, that we can recognize that an AI can do a lot better, um, than us. There, there's, there's a lot of things that can be automated, um, and that computers are just better suited to do than humans. Um, and, and I, I believe that, you know, kind of the automation of a lot of things is actually going to be a really positive thing. Um, sure, there may be some jobs um, that are impacted, but I think by and large, um, it's going to be a really positive thing. It's, it's just increasing the effectiveness of the tools that we have. Um, and throughout the history of humans, every time we've got new tools, um, it's ultimately been, you know, been, been a better thing. Um, and then, uh, let's see, the last thing that I was going to say, um, oh, it just... Maybe it'll come back to me. But anyway, those are two of my thoughts. <laughs> okay, good. We actually got so, a really good question from, I think her name is Dia, or his name is Dia. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned uh, having a solid portfolio mm -hmm. um, 
when interviewing. Can you talk about like what that portfolio might contain or should contain? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I actually posted about this recently on LinkedIn, so it's something that's fresh in my mind. So a really great place to, to house your portfolio is GitHub. Um, GitHub is a code repository. Um, you can have, you know, put your, your code up there so other people can see it. You could have um, a, a markdown document, which is like a little blog post describing what you did. You know, put any files up there. Um, so that's a really good place to, to kind of put the projects that you've worked on. You know, and in terms of what to put in your portfolio, um, I think you know examples of, of projects that that show that you you can take data and turn it into something useful. Um, you, you know, uh, I think that that's a great great thing to do. Um, I always recommend uh, for people wanting to to build a data science portfolio to to spend time analyzing uh, real world data sets um, and, and not just the ones that that you find on Kaggle or or other places like that. Um, Kaggle, for those that may not know, it's a um, it's a it's a website where um, data scientists can can practice machine learning and, and compete against each other, um, and and companies can actually you know uh, set up a competition and, and have data scientists compete on the company's data set uh, to produce the kind of the best model. Um, Kaggle is a great place to to practice and learn about machine learning, but the data sets a lot of times are are a lot cleaner than than you'd actually see in real life, um, and so I always recommend it data scientists to get experience outside of Kaggle. Um, two examples of, of things in my portfolio um, that really helped me make the transition back into data science um, from law <laughs> was one, uh, a couple years ago, I built a bot um, that, that would, would comb my wife's favorite fashion sites, find the best deals, and then post them to her website. Or post That's them awesome. To her blog. Um, and I'd use kind of a machine learning um, algorithm in the back end to kind of decide what what were the best deals, um, and so I have I think on my GitHub now I have a, some code the older version of that up there, um, so that I mean that kind of illustrated some some of my skills. Um, then another thing that I did um, is while I was in law school I, I did a a study on how law firms use social media, mm. um, and, and what I did for that was uh, I again you know created my own data set I went. Uh, to over a hundred, a thousand different law firm websites in Orange County, and, and scraped them, um, classify them by type of law. So I used data science to, to kind of classify them based on you know keyword and uh, natural language processing, um, and then figured out what uh, you know social media sites they were using um, to to kind of get it and figured out what what the size of the law firm was. Um, so it, you know constructed this data set, and then I also um, surveyed over. Uh, 400 attorneys that kind of answered a survey. Wow. So I built kind of this massive survey uh, and understanding of, you know, how lawyers in Orange County are using social media and I use data science to do that. So, you know, those are two kind of two examples from my portfolio of, of projects that um, were real world data, were things that I was interested in. And, you know, I just went out and, and did a project. Um, you know, I didn't have to have someone tell me, um, you know, <laughs> go do this. So it wasn't, wasn't a school assignment. It, it wasn't, um, you know, wasn't something else like that. So, and what I love about those projects is you're showing the hiring manager that not only are you passionate about it, but that like you are curious and you went out and did these projects on your own to help yeah. solve a problem or help answer a question. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Um, it, it doesn't need to be doing a big project like that on your own. One example of, you know, um, someone that, that I hired something in his portfolio that I really liked was he was working for a government agency where they did all their data analysis in Excel. Um, and Excel is great for, for a lot of things. Um, when you're, when you, your data set starts to get bigger and you're trying to do more complex things, it can be a real pain. Um, he, he noticed that there was this huge inefficiency and decided, you know, he was going to go and write a Python script, you know, kind of, unasked, I think he was an intern at the time, a Python script to do everything that he was doing in Excel. Um, and he went and so he, he built the script and he went and sold his, you know, his boss and, and everyone else in, in the company on using the specific Python script. Um, and they ended up saving, I think, cutting the time for the specific task um, by like 30 times faster or something. Wow. Um, and for me, that was a really powerful example of, you know, this is someone who identified there was a problem. 
you know, um, there's a better way that I can do it. He went out and learned what he needed to, to, to write the script in Python. Um, and then, you know, ultimately had a better result for the company I was working for. And that kind of thing in your portfolio, even if you can't, you know, because of intellectual property reasons or whatever, share the code for that, having that story or description of what you did, um, that's, that's huge. So definitely. Well, Bo, I want to thank you so much for your time, for being our guest today, sharing your insights with us. Where can everyone learn more about you and also your live video events? So the best place is LinkedIn. Um, I, I post, uh, you know, I, I post a lot on LinkedIn. I, I'll post about kind of the video events there. Um, you know, we're, we're always doing recording. You know, I have, I have a good group of other um, kind of prominent data scientists that I've been doing these, these events with. Um, and um, yeah, so connect with me on LinkedIn. So. Okay, what I'll do is I just put up a short URL, ex.pn slash Bo Walker. And I'll set up a redirect that will go straight to your LinkedIn profile okay. so people can follow you there. Because you're, awesome. you're doing awesome work on LinkedIn, by the way. Thank All you. your posts, yeah, it's killer. You're being very, very helpful. It's you're so responsive, everybody. So. Um, so I'll go ahead and set up a redirect. So if everyone wants, wants to follow Bo, make sure to go to ex.pn slash Bo Walker. Um, thank you again for right. your time today, and uh, we'll chat soon. Okay, thanks so much. Okay.